Okay, so it looks like we're recording and uh, my name is Dr. Amy Tan and I am from Houston Community College. I'm a member of the steering committee for Open Ed 21 and I want to welcome you to our community meeting on May 14th. We're so excited that you all are joining us today from from all over and we're, we're going to go through some of our, our questions and uh, I think we're, we have a, a pretty good agenda today. Um, the first thing we always start with the mentee setup and then we're going to bring you some organizing process updates and those of you joining us today are going to get a lucky sneak peek at the call for proposals which will be released sometime next week, early next week. Um, and we're going to wrap it up with the discussion, um, hoping to get some feedback about professional development. So again, thanks for joining us today. And we will move on to our first Minty questions. Um, don't forget, uh, if you, it seems like you're all familiar with Menti and you, you have navigated to menti.com. The code for today is 12484414. Someone put it in the chat for us. Looks like Alex put it in the chat for us. And um, so be sure to join us on Menti so you can participate in the questions and answers and feedback. Thank you, Wendy. Wendy put the code in there again. And um, just a reminder, if you're not able to get into Minty and you wanna throw your answers into the chat, we welcome that as well. Okay, so we'll move on to our first question. So tell us, where are you joining from? You can throw your US state in there, your Canadian province or your country. Oh, wonderful, we have lots of Canadian representation today. Looks like Georgia is leading, Colorado. Somebody needs to throw Texas in there for me because I'm not able to do it. Tunisia, wow, fantastic. New York, Quebec. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna need some help with pronouncing the uh, provinces. Michigan, Manitoba. Excellent, well, welcome everybody. As always, this is being recorded and, and you'll be able to view it later as well. And anyone who isn't able to join us will, will have access to the recording. So to get us started, we are thinking about summer here at Open Ed. So how do you envision yourself this summer? Current crunchy Cheetos? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So if you, if you attended uh, last year, you will know that we have an ongoing debate. Nicole, would you like to share about the debate or would you? <laughs> um, so it, it was a running joke at last year's conference, the great Cheeto debate over crunchy versus puffy versus all of the international varieties. So we like to throw in uh, Cheetos to all open ed uh, conversations. Open Cheetos. <laughs> so it looks like some people see Cheetos in their future. Vaxxed and relaxed and oh, very, very busy is, is also, these seem to be tying outdoors. Outdoors is a good option. Overheated. Yes, those of us in Houston, Texas will be suffering. Although we can't complain too much. We've had a lovely spring. Just one homebody, no snow. We're gonna avoid the snow. And no pampered. I think that that's wrong. I think, I think we need to find some pampering. Oh, we do have in the chat that um, someone will be pampering his pet. <laughs> relaxed and efficient that is a good one in the chat okay well I hope everybody has some good plans for this summer and I'm definitely gonna make some time to get away so I don't know if I'll be pampered 
but I will escape. Okay, and I think that that takes us to our updates. And so I will hand over the, the meeting to Nicole Allen. Thank you very much. All right, so just a couple of uh, quick updates on the operations front uh, here. Um, uh, just for those of us who, 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 or those of you who are joining us for the first time, just a, a quick update on the operating structure of the conference. Uh, we're in the midst of a, a two-year sort of transitional period for the conference, uh, being supported by a, a coalition of four organizations, uh, OpenStax, my organization, Spark, the University System of Maryland, and the Colorado Department of Higher Education, uh, alongside uh, this uh, organizing of the 2020 and 2021 conferences. There's also a strategic planning process that's ongoing to sort of decide what comes next for the conference and what future governance will look like. And that's gonna be a conversation that I know uh, some of our future community meetings are gonna address. Uh, and uh, uh, we have members of, of the team that, that's working on that here with us today. Uh, so the conference is uh, supported by those organizations, but it's truly run through a community driven process. Uh, the steering committee uh, who is uh, uh, leading this meeting today, uh, we are uh, sort of steering steering the ship, but there's also uh, other committees that are supporting different streams of work. And I just want to make sure to acknowledge all of the wonderful people that are involved in that. Uh, you can see the list on, on the link. And then, uh, so many uh, hundreds more people signed up to be involved in the conference in some way. And uh, we are still working to set up a couple more committees that we're gonna need as we get into the summer. And also we'll be sending out invitations for pro proposal reviewers uh, early next week, uh, since the call for proposals is imminent, as we will find out in a moment. So just, you know, really want to thank all who are here, who are involved in the process, and then also, uh, you know, everybody who is willing to contribute to the conference that we haven't reached out to yet. Um, we're excited to have you involved in some way, and we'll communicate about that soon. So I am going to turn it over to David for a few pieces of information about the 2021 conference. All right, all right. Hello, everybody. My name is David Draper, and I'm coming at you from a beautiful sunny day here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And I'm here to tell you about the save date for the conference. It will be happening from October 18th to 22nd in 2021. So get excited, get prepared. It's going to be an absolutely fun time. Um, I love a good fall conference. Like I know for, for me here, it's when all the leaves starting to change. So it'll be good to be able to just like sit around, watch the sun uh, kind of like start to get shorter and like what's the leaves change and learn a lot more about open ed. So get excited. It's going to be a great time of year for a fantastic conference. It will be happening virtual again. Um, so wherever you're at, um, it might actually not even be fall for you. So still enjoy the weather there, but it'll be online in the safety of your own home with a lot of great online programming similar to last year. Um, so definitely set up uh, get your setup ready to go and um i know there were some very interesting ways people attended last year uh from the uh local hero of the rocket cam showing the dog in every single meeting so if you're trying to brainstorm fun ideas for how to engage in an online conference now is always a great time for that and registrations are going to open up in june um so keep your eye out for that those are going to be starting relatively soon uh, i guess it's fast approaching now that we're halfway through the month of may so keep your eyes open for that and there's going to be very similar rates for registration as last year and the scholarship process is going to be uh, continuing on so um, if you were somebody who was involved in the scholarship process last year or took part in that definitely keep an eye open for that as well uh, it's a fantastic way to help ensure that this process is able to be um, accessible for as many people as possible knowing that there are so many different contexts that people are coming to this conference for and I know everybody's been hinting that we've got a fun sneak peek for the call for, call for proposals coming up. We do, it's actually online currently and will be um, full announced on Monday. Proposal is gonna be due on June 18th, which fun fact is actually my birthday. So my birthday present is gonna see all the fantastic proposals that everybody's gonna be getting. Um, and then updates are gonna be based on community feedback. 
So there's been a lot of fantastic work put into the call for proposals this year. Uh, I honestly want to make sure that everybody who's been working on a committee uh, and even the subcommittees on those committees get proper thanks because it's been a absolute massive amount of work there. So thank you so much to everybody's who everybody who's had their hands on this. It's been a fantastic uh, process seeing it kind of grow and change for this year. And without further ado, I'll pass it off to Emily to kind of give us the full rundown through it. Great, so we're going to split up and the Mentimeter is going to have a question. What feedback or questions do you have on the call for proposals? So feel free to enter those at any time. And then Nicole's also going to switch the screen over so we can actually look at the information that is contained within the call for proposals. And this really was a team effort. We have some of the program team members here today, Dylan, Stacy, Lisa, I think are here, as well as our steering committee members that are also on the program team. Um, David, Wendy, Amy Tan, um, Winnie from Spark has done an awesome amount of work on all of this. So a whole lot of people for us to thank. Um, so we have a little bit of introductory information about the conference, catch the dates. Um, and then below that, we have some information contextualizing our theme. And I'm going to pass it over to Nicole for a little bit more about the theme piece. Yeah, so we we talked about the theme on our last meeting and we knew what the theme was going to be, but not the words we were going to use to describe it. <laughs> um, so uh, the words that uh, will describe the theme are making open for all. And the theme builds on last year's focus on sort of reimagining open education as a solution to the, you know, the challenges that were brought to the forefront in, in 2020, you know, the new ones through COVID uh, and the longstanding ones through, you know, systemic racism and structural inequities across society. And uh, in choosing making open for all, uh, it, it really centers action for equity and inclusion and also looks at the word all um, both aspirationally and critically because we recognize that there are many ways that, you know, open isn't currently serving all and there's some limitations where maybe open isn't for everybody. Uh, you know, specifically in areas where it intersects with privacy and indigenous knowledge and, um, you know, other, other uh, borders. So uh, there's just lots of, uh, you know, exciting conversation that can happen around uh, the idea of making open for all. And we just really want to emphasize the need for action in this year's event. So anybody else who's, <laughs> who's involved in formulating the theme, please feel free to jump in. Otherwise, I'll pass it back to Emily. Awesome. Thank you, Nicole. And I really like this language here. So I encourage you all to read it carefully as you, when you have more time. Um, the next topic we want to discuss are literally the topics. And we have 10 different topics to help ground people as they're submitting proposals. And some of these are very similar to what we had last year, right? We have an open education 101. But we also have some new topics that came out of brainstorming sessions that we had. Um, one new one is ethical education, issues of agency, labor, privacy, and consent. We also specifically want to invite members of the K-12 community and people using OER around the world to participate. So we have specific topics centered around those. For example, we have exchanging knowledge across borders, open education around the world to invite that international participation. Um, and we also want to celebrate some of the fun that we have with open. So one of our um, topics is the joy of open, celebrating community care and collaboration. So the program team um, iteratively addressed these and the steering committee has been involved. I really wanna thank um, Lisa Haldeman and Beatrice Canales who attended like at least three or four extra meetings along with Winnie from Spark to do wordsmithing to, you know, this was a very iterative process and I really, really appreciate all the different input. Um, and I'm really proud of how these turned out. And of course, if you have questions, you can enter them into the Menti and we'll be popping back over there to look at your questions um, in just a minute. So anyone who is involved in this process, you know, on the program team or even on the steering committee and involved in generating these topics, does anyone want to say anything with respect to this list of 10 topics?
Well, I appreciate a few positive comments in the chat. Um, so thank you all for that. And of course, the goal is to try to inspire all of us to generate really exciting proposals for the conference. And so hopefully these will help move us forward um, with eliciting um, people's proposals. Yeah. And Emily, people can, when they submit their proposal, they can click more than one topic, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, you can select up to three is my understanding. So I think that will be helpful because of course, um, for example, you might be working in the K-12 space and also um, wanting to share something related maybe to teaching and learning through open. So there's, <laughs> there's definitely a way to mix and match these to really make them um, capture what your particular proposal is going to be about. Yeah, yeah, and noting that the topics aren't are, are meant to be sort of uh, encouraging as opposed to limiting. So they're intentionally sort of broad and high level to you know really encourage people to submit lots of different types of proposals that relate to these in all sort of different ways. Um, so uh, the and and you know we'll see how the proposals shake out and you know how this ends up looking in in the actual program once we get to the point of uh, you know, scheduling things and organizing things and, and sort of what tags end up going on what. Great. Well, next up after um, discussing these topics are to really take a look at the different sorts of session types that are going to be available. So 10 minute pre recorded lightning talks are really very similar to what we had last year. The one thing that's new here is there will be a specific time during the conference when the lightning talks will be live streamed. And so different lightning talks would have their little 10 minute slot in, in different places during the actual program. 25 minute presentations this year are going to be pre-recorded, which is different than last year. Last year, people came and gave live 25 minute presentations that were recorded. Um, and <laughs> um, there's going to be a chance for them also to be streamed at a specific time during the program. And we're encouraging, although not requiring the presenters to hop on. And so there can be a live chat. Definitely the people who are watching the presentations can chat with each other. And you know, in some cases we'll have the presenters there too. So we can have that engagement piece. Um, yes, and having the specific time to live or to stream the lightning talks is based on some of the feedback we got last year. Also based on feedback from last year, some people wanted some longer time slots. They said 25 minutes is not enough. So we now have a 40 minute presentation slot. These will be given live um, and then recorded as they're being given so people can watch them on demand later. And this will be a great chance for people who really want to have audience participation or engagement of the audience as a part of their presentation. Um, so that's something that if you're submitting that type of proposal, you'll want to um, highlight in your um, proposal submission. And then related to getting good discussion between participants, we also have specific discussion sessions, which are also in the 40 minute time slot. Note that these will not be recorded. Another piece of feedback from last year was that not every conversation needs to be recorded and that it would be nice to have some space for some more perhaps candid conversations. And so this discussion format is an opportunity to do that. Um, Similar to last year, we're also having a 55 minute time slot for panels and where we can get maybe three or more different panelists. Um, and in this case, it would be 45 minutes for presentation and 10 minutes at least reserved for questions with the audience. These will also be recorded. And then finally, a new format for this year is called open space and people can choose the time length they want between 10, 25, 40, or 55 minutes, and propose something that's particularly um, innovative or um, just maybe a little more creative that you want to do in this space. And again, um, whether these are recorded or not could be up to the presenter. Let's see, um, Nicole, would you like to add anything about these six different session types that we have available? No, I think that, that, that covers it. Awesome. Well, so just, I propose. Oh. oh, sorry. Just want to thank everybody who took the time to provide feedback on last year's conference because it it really matters and it helps us make better decisions. Um, so thank you for doing it, and please keep it coming. 
Absolutely. And I, that's about what we want to show here. There is the proposal submission information. Um, as David already said, the deadline is going to be June 18th. So keep that in mind. We're using a platform called Easy Chair. So people will quickly make an account and then be able to submit their um, proposals. We have some information about the different requirements. Um, you can only be an author on up to three presentations, which is similar to last year. And we have similar review criteria. Um, we plan to get review decisions back to people by the very end of July. Um, so here are the review criteria. And, you know, I think, I think that's really all we wanted to talk about right now with respect to the call for proposals. Um, but let's hop back to the questions in Menti. And oh, there's all sorts of <laughs> awesome questions. Um, and we're not going to answer every single question here. There, this is also going to give us good ideas for what we, what we need to cover in a frequently um, asked questions section that we'll also make available. Um, students, yes, there's definitely language um, in the call for proposals, especially saying we are encouraging proposals from students. So that's one piece. I would encourage everyone here on this call to reach out to um, engage students that you think have uh, something that would make a good proposal and encourage students to apply. Um, and we can keep thinking about other ways to, you know, especially try to make sure we have student participation in the conference. Um, So some excitement about the topics, um, an idea on distinguishing session types by time. It might be useful to be as explicit as possible about the expected outcomes of sessions in each type. And I will just say, we do ask that people who are submitting um, a proposal have a clear learning or multiple clear learning objectives for what the audience will take away. And you know, I think it is kind of on the presenter to think about what can be um, accomplished in the amount of time that they're going to have. Yeah, some people are excited about the open space idea, and I'm excited about that too. Um, so there's a question about the open space. Will we be using the post-its on the schedule board method? And, you know, this is a, a something that people are, are planning in advance, so it's a little bit different than that on-the-fly kind of open space. Um, Yep, and this is the call for proposals is for sort of contributed propo proposals that go through a review process as we get closer to the conference, you know, there's definitely going to be opportunities to add additional, um, you know, opportunities to, to connect with each other. Right, and that kind of addresses the question about whether the open space section includes social events or if those are separate, but we, we also do want not not in this process, but we will be <laughs> soliciting ideas um, for social events. And that's just going to come a little bit later. And then, Nicole, I think maybe we could get these to scroll and we can see. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to. Oh, no. I'm not sure if you can see what's on my screen. No, you can't. That's good. <laughs> no, Emily, one of the things I saw was a question about the topics. And I just wanted to say, as someone who was part of the review process last year, that um, that several people look at the proposals, and and sometimes um, the reviewers think, oh, maybe this doesn't really fit in this topic or this theme or this category, and so we might um, the reviewers might propose that it goes in a different category, and usually there, there's a conversation with the proposer. Um, and when that happens, so 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 I don't know about enforcing, but but certainly that's a consideration, and um, and how the program committee is putting together the the final program with with all the right. And the ten topics are really going. Uh, we're trying to encourage proposal submissions with the ten topics. The organization of the sessions themselves and the tags that are used may, you know, look different, and so that's kind of a different piece. Um, that aspect. Let's see. Um, 
There's a question, are there moderators for the pre-recorded sessions with the live engagement? And it's- Yes. Nicole. Short yes. answer is yes. <laughs> um, and of, of course, we're encouraging um, the presenters to be there if at all possible, because that's going to make it a much richer conversation. Yeah, and I don't think we're going to be able to get to all these questions, but if you have other questions you're just like wondering about, it would be very helpful if you could put them in because we still haven't written the call, the uh, FAQ. <laughs> so having sort of prompts of things that people are wondering that, that we should make sure to address is very helpful. Nicole, I saw a question about uh, reviewers. Do you want to, or Emily, do you want to talk about how people can volunteer for that? So te like technically the form isn't closed. So if you're up for it, here is the link to the form to fill out to volunteer. And please do it fast. <laughs> but yes, we do need many, many pro um, proposal mm -hmm. reviewers. So we do invite people to join us for that. Indeed. Awesome. Yes, well, and that'll you. take place uh, during, during uh, late June. Well, good. So as Nicole said, please do continue adding your questions here so that they can be addressed later. Um, and then as we're ready, we're going to pass it over to Haley. We have some other Mentimeter questions that we're going to go through. Sure. All right. Well, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Haley. I'm part of the operations team at Spark, uh, helping to organize the conference. Um, so we just had a couple of other questions we were looking to get some feedback on. I know um, we're kind of at like a bit of a transition point where uh, we're either wrapped up the um, semester or in the process of wrapping up and, and moving into the summer. So we just kind of wanted to take a little bit of time to check in and just see, you know, how are things going on the ground level? Um, so, you know, uh, wondering um, what the attitudes are towards fall conferences and general professional development, um, where you are and on your campus. Um, so I know, uh, obviously, the last year was a little bit of a challenge, just given sort of uh, some of the uncertainty around budgeting at institutions. Um, and that may still be the case this year, but um, what we're looking for specifically is just, you know, has this shifted over the last year? Are attitudes still relatively the same? Um, what is sort of the overall um, energy um, where you are at? Um, and feel free to either um, pop that into Mentimeter or uh, the chat also works if that's easier for you. Um, but Mentimeter helps us um, keep things consolidated. And just noting, since we're not seeing any results, it's entirely, um, and if you've entered a result that you don't see, it is likely that um, your device is still stuck on the last question. So look for the drop up option um, and click the go to slide button. Thanks, Nicole. Um, so I see some answers starting to roll in. Need to regroup and lick our wounds as we move ahead for a different year. Totally understand. Uh, yes to conferences, no to travel. Travel still on hold. Um, main conference I plan around. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> um, seeing some interest in professional development still entirely focused on teaching for online remote teaching, no to conferences. Um, yeah, so hearing that things are available, but still not um, as widely open to travel and budgeting. Spring or summer is a better time for conferences, more person says, that's um, good to know. Finances are more clear. Yeah, lots of interest in virtual conferences. Well, you're in luck <laughs> for this year. Um, PD is always encouraged, great. Okay. Interesting. So sounds like things are relatively the same as they have been over the past couple months, but um, yeah, thanks for just helping us get a little bit of a pulse on um, what's happening on the ground. Awesome. And then I'll, I'll hand it over to Spencer for the next question. Thanks, Haley. 
Um, hey everybody, this is Spencer at the Colorado Department of Higher Ed. So excited to be involved here. Um, our next question is, what would a successful experience look like for you at the Open Ed Conference 2021? So again, go ahead and pop that into Menti. <laughs> Great first answer, capital F-U-N. I think something we're all seeking um, in our professional lives and <laughs> just in general these days. Um, and I see a note about collective action. I think that's one of the strengths of open education is this kind of collective community-based um, orientation. So yeah, getting at that would be amazing. Let's see what else we have coming through. Connecting, um, engaging remote sessions that are not, that are, sorry, that are run professionally. Yes. Um, I think we had, a, we heard a little bit about what the session types are like. Um, and so, that hopefully will get at that engaging nature. Let's see here, other things coming through. Oh, I love this. I learned something new and I met some awesome people. That is a great way to leave a conference. So hopefully that will happen. Um, lots of themes around connecting, making connections, meeting new people. Um, I see a few snarky remarks about Cheetos which does not surprise me given that's become our unofficial mascot for the, for the, the conference last year. Um, opportunities to connect, new learning opportunities, um, things to bring back to campus. I like that. I, I, am a ha I am certainly a fan of tangible, you know, things you can bring back to your, um, your everyday job. And those are big takeaways for me from a conference as well. Uh, sustaining community cohesion. Ooh like that too. Um, yeah, I, I, I think there's lots of themes that are kind of popping up to me here. Um, you know, as, as Nicole mentioned before, a lot of the feedback from last year's conference, which we gleaned during the conference, and again, after the conference, um, and even in these community calls has really informed how this, this conference has been shaped. And obviously that's evident in the, the program content that the program team sh shared earlier. So all of this feedback is really important for that reason. Um, Rocket, I see Rocket being highlighted. Rocket is a dog that was featured in last year's conference. We had a lot of pet conversation on Discord, which was a cool place to connect. Um, so yeah, lots of different channels, lots of people bringing kind of them themselves, hopefully to the conference as they see fit. So. Um, and Jeff says everybody has to join Discord this year. It was a lot of fun. Discord was another channel. Like I mentioned, we had conversations on Twitter, Discord, um, through kind of the Hangout spaces um, and all those. So great, these are fantastic. I think I'm gonna kick it over to Wendy for our next question now that we know what you all feel like um, for that one. So Wendy, over to you. Hi everyone, I'm um, sorry my camera's not on. I'm using my daughter's computer because mine died. Well, actually, no, I got hand sanitizer put all over it. That's what happened. So um, anyway, I'm Wendy from Maryland. Um, and so your question is, how could the Open Ed Conference support and accelerate the trajectory of your work in the future? So how do you think it will help you in your professional realm um, if you present or if you join? I'm certainly excited to join this year. Legitimacy, yep. You get to learn a lot of new projects and efforts, programs, bringing to a strong community, diversity, making connections in the field. That's what I love about conferences. New ideas, professional network. Learn what others are doing. Yep, certainly as educators, we uh, we never steal anybody's idea. We just borrow. We borrow. Opportunity to get feedback from your pedagogy badges. Yes, and professional badges.
It's an interesting perspective for an instructional designer. Opportunities for collaboration and research and grants. Yep, I agree. Seen a lot of stuff about Discord in the chat, so <laughs> I'm excited to know more about that as well since I wasn't a part of this conference last year. So, eWorld, that's a good one. <laughs> Confidence booster. I see Alex said it's not for everyone there for Discord and the chat. So uh, someone learned about what Discord is too, since we keep mentioning it. Discord and Cheetos seems to be the theme here. Well, it looks like we haven't gotten any new responses in a while. Okay. So oh. it's going to be over Tiffany, right? Mm hmm. Okay, okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna um, wrap us up here. What else do you have to tell us? What else is going on? What's um, what other thoughts do you have on the conference? Call for proposals. How we doing? Um, what else do you have to tell us? Interest in making it global. Thanks for continuous improvement process and feedback loop. Cool. And thank you. Keep track of Discord as well as the conference sessions was overwhelming. Okay. That's good to note. Love that it continues to be community driven. Good bagels always on your mind. I agree. <laughs> Good food in general. Cheetos. One of the highlights of my week is my Open Ed 21 programming meetings. I really like you folks. You know what? We like you too. Think purposefully about cultivating a student presence. Maybe we need to try and actively recruit a student panel or something. That's that's not a bad idea. Maybe we can um, make a note of that um, for looking at um, proposals and 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 where we get with that. But that's an awesome idea. Student panels always they always end up being everyone's favorite. So. <laughs> Looking for great swag, new sweaters. Need to give students Cheetos. You know what? I bet they'd come if we gave them Cheetos. We need a new way to share our music with each other. Karaoke isn't the same online. Okay. Hard for some newcomers to make sense of where the conference fits. Okay. It's hard to keep track of these like moving ones. Open Head 21 playlist. Program committee meetings make my Thursdays. Fully open space would help a lot. So just like an open room. Comment previously about grants and funding, maybe a way to network and highlight opportunities. Games, trivia, digital escape rooms. There's some really great comments, guys. Jeff said in the chat, the Reclaim crew, 
seems to run karaoke very well through their own DS106 and Reclaim video platforms at other events. I think we're about ready to move on. Um, but if you have more comments, please feel free to keep adding them there just to get in touch with us. Um, but that's, uh, don't forget to follow at Hey Open Ed. Um, we have a Twitter, a Facebook, Instagram, and our official hashtag is hashtag Open Ed 21 for this year. So make sure to follow all of that stuff. And our next meeting is on June 9th from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern um, or 17 to 18 UTC. It's weird to read for me. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, that's our next meeting. I hope you guys um, enjoyed this and got lots of information out of it. Does anyone else have anything to add here from the steering committee? No, just thanks everybody for continuing to take the time to join these meetings and provide feedback. Really appreciate it very much and uh, look forward to continuing the conversation. Yes, thank you everyone.